Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the Director of Training here at .NET Nuke Corporation. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade .NET Nuke. Now we're going to be working with version 5.5.0 and upgrading to the latest release, 5.5.1. But the, the process we show here is applicable to any version of .NET Nuke greater than version 4.6.2. So if you're running on any newer release of DNN, you should be able to go through these simple upgrade steps. And what we're actually going to go through is we'll, we'll start with a clean instance of .NET Nuke. It's running version 5.5. We're going to go through and back up the file system. We'll back up the database. And those are two very important steps in performing any upgrade process. We're then going to go and take the upgrade package, which I've already downloaded, and we will unblock it. And I'll explain what that means. Once it's unblocked, we'll extract that zip file. And then while that process is occurring, we'll go through and disable the website. We want to disable the website so that users are not able to hit it while we're trying to commit or perform the upgrade process. Now, while the website's disabled, we're going to make a simple change to the web.config file. And then we're going to go through the process of actually performing the upgrade, which will consist of copying the upgrade package. Now, once that is complete, we need to re-enable the website and then call the upgrade URL. So in our window here, we have a clean instance of .NET Nuke 5.5.0 Professional. Now the upgrade process from Community Edition, Professional Edition, or Enterprise Edition is going to be the same. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is log into the website as my host account. And if we go to the host extensions page, we can see which version of .NET Nuke we're currently running on. We can see that we're on 5.5.0. So now that we've confirmed the proper version, we're going to go ahead and perform the backup of the file system. Now in my case, I have the website running on this local computer in a folder called C websites. And then I have it running in .NET Nuke demo 5.5.0. Now to back up the file system, I'm simply going to copy that folder and paste. And that will make a duplicate copy of that folder which effectively creates a backup. If something happens during the upgrade process, I can get back to the original files. So that will go through and complete the backup of our file system. And now we want to do the same thing with our database. We want to perform a backup. Well, the database requires an additional or a different step. To backup the database, I'm going to use Microsoft SQL Server's Management Studio. That's a tool that comes with Microsoft SQL Server. And it's also a tool that's available for free if you're using the Express Editions in Microsoft SQL Server. Now what I'm going to do is find the database within our database list. And I'm going to right click on that database, choose Tasks, and then choose Backup. Now when I do a backup on a database, I can choose a number of different features here. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to hit OK. And SQL will go through and do the backup on that database. Now, if for some reason something happens to the database during the upgrade process that fails, then we can restore to that previous backup of the database. All right, so the next step we're going to work with is to find the upgrade package. Now, I've previously downloaded the upgrade package for .NET Nuke Professional. As I said, I'm, I'm working with .NET Nuke Professional, but you would, if you're working with Community Edition, you would have downloaded the Community Edition upgrade package. Upgrade packages come as zip files. So I'm going to right click on the zip file and I'm going to choose properties. And this is the unblocking process. With some versions of Microsoft Windows and with various Windows updates, Microsoft implemented a security process that will block certain types of zip files and their contents. What we need to do is we need to go into that file and choose the unblock option on the properties window. Hit apply and then OK. And that will allow us to fully extract the contents of that zip file without missing any files. So what we're going to do then is right click on the upgrade package and I'm simply going to choose the extract all option. Windows will go through and extract the contents of that upgrade package into a folder locally within my downloads folder. Now while that process is going through, we can go back to our website and back to the file system. And what we're going to do now is we're actually going to disable the file system. We're going to disable the website. Now the reason we're going to do this is because we don't want anyone to hit the website while we're going through the upgrade. Now we could go into visual, I'm sorry, into 
Microsoft's IIS manager where we run our websites or manage our websites. We could turn the website off there or we could actually go into the file system into the directory where our website exists and I'm going to right click and choose new. I'm going to create a new document. Now I'm actually going to create a document called app underscore offline dot htm. So that's a blank htm file at this point. The name is very specific. It has to be app underscore offline. What that actually causes is if we were to try to go back to our browser now and to try to load our website, it actually brings the website down. Now what it tries to do is it the IIS or the web server tries to display that app offline file in the browser. Well, right now that app offline file, like I said, is a blank HTML file. There's no contents in it. So it's not going to display that information. But if we were to put contents in there, anyone who made a request to our website would see the contents of that HTML file. So we could display a message that tells them that the website is down. Now for simplicity's sake, we're going to go ahead and bypass populating that file. And we're now going to go in and modify our web.config file. So going back to the directory where our website exists, I'm going to open the web.config file. Now I can open that with any number of different types of file or different types of programs. I'm going to go ahead and load it into Microsoft's Notepad, which will simply load it as a as a text file or a text editor here. And if we go ahead and, and look into that file, we're looking for a section in the web.config file that says add key equal auto upgrade. And there's a value string there. And that value is currently set to true. What we're going to do is we're going to set that to false. So we're changing the auto upgrade key from true to false. We can simply save the web.config file and go ahead and close that file. Now what that is going to do is when we remove the app offline file, which will bring our website back online, .NET Nuke will not automatically fire the upgrade process. You can go through that and have DNN fire the upgrade process automatically, but I found from my experience in running various websites that it's better to run it manually. So what we're going to do now, before we try to re-enable our website, we need to copy the contents of the upgrade package. Well, that extraction process, when it finished, opened a new window here on my computer which I have the contents of the upgrade package. So I can come in here, press Control A to select all the documents there, right click and choose copy. And that's gonna copy all of the contents of that 551 upgrade package. What I'm then gonna do is go back to my website folder, .NET Nuke Demo 550. I'm gonna right click in the folder there and choose paste. Now Windows is gonna prompt me to overwrite all of the files that we're pasting. And for the most part, it will be safe to go ahead and overwrite all of those files. Now, we're not overriding files like the web.config file or some of the other .config files that are, that are part of our website. We are overwriting a number of folders. The contents of the upgrade package will provide all of the files necessary to upgrade .NET Nuke, but will not replace things like images in your portals directory. So we really don't run the risk of breaking or losing information during that copy process. Well, now that we've copied those files, the upgrade package over, what we need to do is we need to try to load our website and try to load the upgrade process. Well, what we can do is we can remove the app offline.htm file. Now what I typically do is I come in here and rename that file. I change the extension to htm.save or something similar it's no longer the app offline.htm file and IIS will not use it to disable our website. So once that change is made, if we now try to go to our website, load that up in a browser, IIS is going to try to load the site, but .NET Nuke knows that there's an upgrade waiting to happen. And what it does is it actually sends any requests that come to the website to a file called install slash under construction dot htm. Well, what we want to do is we want to remove the under construction dot htm from the URL. And we're going to type in install dot aspx 
question mark mode equal upgrade. And that's going to go through. And if we make that request, it will fire off the upgrade process for .NET Nuke. And what we can see here is that it finds that we have the local assemblies for version 551 on the file system, but the database is currently at 550. So .NET Nuke begins and goes through the upgrade process. And it executes a number of SQL scripts. It will also go through and install a number of different packages as part of the upgrade, upgrading any modules that are necessary, any extensions um, such as providers that come with HTML or with the uh, .NET Nuke Professional Edition, authentication providers, navigation providers, and various other bits that come with an upgrade version. What we should see is a success message next to each of those lines in green. Now if we see anything in red that means something likely failed during the upgrade process. At the very bottom we should get an upgrade complete message and if so we should have a link there that says click here to access your portal. If we go ahead and click there we'll be sent back to the home page of our portal. Now it's going to take a moment for the website to load because we've just made a number of changes to the file system. IIS, the web server has to recycle and reload that website so everything will load back up. Now once it's done, we come back here, we see our same page that we saw previously. But if we go to the host extensions page, we should see that we're running a newer version of .NET Nuke now. And we can see within the framework section of the extensions page that the version is 5.5.1. Now what we've performed here is a very simple upgrade process for .NET Nuke that you can run in either a test or a production environment. Now, we did perform a backup before doing the upgrade. Now, I always recommend that you perform a backup before you do any upgrades to .NET Nuke. Now, for a more business critical website, you would probably do the upgrade process in a test environment. Make sure that that upgrade works rather than doing it live like I just did. Once you've done it in a test environment, then you can decide how you want to proceed. If you want to move it from your test environment to your production environment, or if you want to actually run the upgrade again on that production environment. In a future video, we'll show you how to do some other upgrade processes when you don't have local access to the website running or the web server running .NET Nuke. Now, for more information on our .NET Nuke training, I encourage you to check out our .NET Nuke training page. You can find it on our website or by going to the shortcut URL here. There we have a number of free videos. We also offer instructor-led online training and then custom on-site or online training. If you have any further questions about the training offered by .NET Nuke, please feel free to email me. Again, my name was Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here at DNN, and you can email me at training at dnncorp.com. Thanks for watching the video.